If Kazma's not winning, luck is a bullshit stat. I mean, it's bullshit stat regardless, but you know. I have a shoe up my butt. I have a canoe up my butt. I have a didgeridoo up my butt. All in which is there to try and earn gratification from your father figure, uh, who is actually the player to your left. Up my butt, up my butt, up my butt. Welcome, welcome, my fellow snakes and ladders, to a new episode of Notice Me Senpai with myself, Joey Zero, and Nazif. Today, we're talking about another set of what ifs and questioning the existence of our senpai Xenogelion when he's really just a small piece on a large board. A reliable source from Eastern Europe tells me that Xeno loves tabletop and board games. His checkmate is very knowledgeable. It makes it very easy to get a clue. When it comes to intros, it was a risk I was willing to take. So let's begin. How long did you put into like doing that? Because like seriously, I I detest board games and pretty much every single one of them you just named. Approximately two and a half minutes. Oh, okay. So for our first question, in the most previous seasonal anime, we saw the silliness that happens when too many gods favor a single hero. And especially when that hero reinvents the game reversely or Othello for its competitors for a world that has never experienced it. If you were to jump to another world, what game would you be able to replicate, but also remember all of the rules of so that you could sell it to the board and rich of that world? I'm trying to remember which anime you're talking about. Uh, the one where all seven gods give the hero, uh, give our boys some blessings. Is it uh, Aristocat? Reborn as an Aristocat? Yes, Reborn as an Aristocat. Oh, okay. An Aristocat? An Aristocat. Aww. All the cats, they arrest. Anyway, uh, you know what? For, for shits and giggles, and because randomly referencing Western stuff is just the lols, did, did you guys ever watch Friends? Yes. Right, okay. So Friends existed for a whole 10 seasons for some reason, and for some other reason, it got a spin-off, which was just focusing about uh, around uh, Matt LeBlanc's character, Joey Tribbiani, right? And my favorite part of, like, it's the only part I can actually remember of the whole of the Joey TV series, um, was when he had to go on TV and play poker, but he didn't know <laughs> how to play poker. So his landlady, who has a huge crush on Joey, tried to teach him how to play poker. And literally everything he did, he, you know, he was winning. He was unnatural at it. And she was just making shit up. And I kind of just want to do that. I kind of just want to go to a, you know, uh, an isekai world where it's just like, you know, Oh yeah, this this is called uh, Zeno always wins, and uh, no matter what Zeno says, Zeno wins. So if you try to use Zeno's rules against Zeno, that's an instant disqualification, and Zeno wins. Either that, or I would take the um, <laughs> I would take the improv game up my butt. Right. Well, yeah, but which one? What do you mean? Yeah, we we are aware that you enjoy taking things up your butt, Zeno. So. Which one? No, 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 no. It's, it's the improv game up my butt. Yeah, which, is which improv one? game? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's the improv game up my butt. Yeah, we get that. The improv game up my butt. Is there actually an improv game called the improv game? Well, duh! <laughs> For everyone else's benefit, because that was just stupid. The improv game is called... Uh, up my butt it is a rhyming game it's the only rhyming game i'm ever good at when it comes to improv and it is literally as dumb as you, you go around in a circle and it's just like i have a shoe up my butt i have a canoe up my butt i have a didgeridoo up my butt i have a and then if you stop for like more than a few seconds everyone just chants up my butt up my butt up my butt and then it starts again with the person that failed and you kind of just try to see how long you can go with the rhyme it's a dumb fun game it's just one I enjoy. It's just really fun. Let's move on. Xenogelion. If Evangelion were a board game, how oh would the mechanics of uh, and of emotional distress play out? How can you describe how how an emotional breakdown would affect the players of a board game about a Evangelion? Okay. Okay. Right. So you have to go around the board, which is like you know designed around Tokyo Three, and each time you go around the board. Um, you you earn a depressed point, right? And uh, when you hit 
a prime number of depressed points, an angel appears. And if your continuity gauge, so I know your mother gauge is at an uh, adequate level, you're able to pilot an Ava, which you can use to then fight the angel to then earn triple depressed points all in which is there to try and earn gratification from your father figure uh, who is actually the player to your left. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and once you have earned the gratification of the character so of the your father figure, remember player to your left, then um, you, you win the game. Of course by that that means everyone else loses. So it's kind of like an impossible cycle to the point of basically you just die out before the game finishes. Just like Monopoly. I think winner gets to choose whose hospital bed they sit next to. Oh my God. So that's why Hideki Anno keeps remaking it. Got it. Oh my God. I heard something about there was one of the movies, one of the, like the, the, the first like reboot movie has now had a remake. I don't know if it's true or not. Ah, no, not, not exactly. One eternity later. I feel like this burning urge to go to Japan to sit down with Hidekiano. <laughs> Just ask him what's wrong. <laughs> right, no, no. Teach him the value of integers, right? Forget floating point numbers. No, no. Things should have integer numbers, right? And like, you, you've already made one. You don't need to remake one. It's, it's like, oh my fucking God. Anyway. Right. We know that Overlords started its life as an actual tabletop campaign for the creator. How would it be different if it was being played by Miss Kobayashi in the crowd, assuming Kobayashi is the DM? How hard a time would she have keeping all the others on task? And how would the characters in the game change? This is brilliant. I love this question. Uh, okay, so clearly everyone's just going to play themselves realize just how superior they are as dragons, nuke all the kingdoms, just go like filthy human scum. There'll be Elmer who's trying to prevent Toru from doing that. Ilulu and Kana will just play around. Quintzakata will just watch. Fafnir will just be in Mount Doom hoarding his gold. Or actually he'll probably invade um, the Nazarek and steal all their gold with their Hitler clone and uh, <laughs> Toro would be Albedo. No, no, Toro would be Toro. She would just be a fuck off dragon and just burninate the countryside. Exactly. She'd be like the ultimate murder hobo, where she literally goes, Well, the fastest way to get there is to fly there, and we just burn the bandits on the way there. Exactly, right? Oh, fucking fly. Yeah. And she's just every single one of them would just fucking metagame the whole thing. You know they would. No, but they had to come on, they had to play the same characters. It's it's the setting is all set out already. Yeah, but they would do it. They would fucking do it. <laughs> they'd just do it anyway. Oh god. Yeah, they'd just fucking do it. And Koyashi yeah. wouldn't be able to rein them in or anything. Good lord. I'm not wrong. I think I think if anything, Fafnir playing video games is a perfect example of why they would do this. <laughs> Or that, the fact that they would. <laughs> All right. A common twist in many action-based anime is to have the strong and not very bright hero take part in a game that tests their wits instead of their power. However, many protagonists are actually smart enough to get by, even if they're not very smart. If you were to play against the three protagonists, now Fumi, Ainz Ulgaon, and Kazuma, who would win a game of Uno? Kazuma, 100%. Right? Even against you? It, even against me. Like, the fucking bastard is luckier than the sun. He would always fucking win somehow. Even if fucking Ainz just swaps the cards around, it would somehow always end up Kazuma's winning. Right? Just fucking, like, you know, the, the guy fucking pulls stuff from the drop table that isn't even fucking there. The option is this small coin purse or pockets full of rocks. What does he do? Fucking rolls off the table and get some panties. If Kazma's not winning, luck is a bullshit stat. I mean, it's a bullshit stat regardless, but you know. <laughs> he is a bullshit stat. I mean, fucking hell, like, Kazma would roll so well. I know, you know, you don't, but um, that fucking meteors would fall from the heavens just to smite everyone else. Oh, it looks like I win by default. Okay, so how would the inclusion of Gundams or really any other kind of like anime inspired urban warfare mechanics impact the cutthroat battlefield of Monopoly and 
why would the inclusion of paper currency make any make it any different from say like settlers of Catan? Oh my god! Right, okay, okay. There's two parts to this question. Yes, it would improve Monopoly by like factors of a gajillion because Monopoly is the most painful board game in existence because no one wins at fucking Monopoly. It is impossible to win at Monopoly. No, All no, no. You- there is one one win state in Monopoly, and that's if you're the therapist observing, trying to identify the psychopath. <laughs> Hi, it's me. I probably was just like, wait, did everyone just like you know put their hands up and at the same time? Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So urban warfare combat that would be amazing. What you could do is set up garages, sorry, garages, mechanic shops, whatever. You're not American. I know it's it's difficult brain. Uh, especially when all anime to do with real robots is American localized. Anyway, so yes, you have garages which will set up, you know, your your super robots, your real robots, and you have to deploy them. Much like hotels and houses and things, you've got to deploy your mobile suits on Park Avenue and the, the power stations. And basically, whenever the player mobile fortress i think they're called mobile fortresses anyway yeah when the player mobile fortress is going past they have to do battle and it becomes like a whole Yu-Gi-Oh situation where all the tiles like you know where you place your cards the just actual tiles on them the game board like you know park avenue and shit and, and you, yeah you just got to get your your exias and your victory gundams and your heavy arms and you got to duke it out and, you know best team wins i make gundam so much easier that was, I mean, that's that's not too far off from what I was expecting. The the only thing I didn't quite communicate clearly is the fact that, like, I'm not talking about a game mechanic. I'm talking about the inclusion of actual giant robots as, like, uh, a, a, a mechanic in the game. Oh, oh, right. Okay, that, right, but actually in New York. So y- you actually have, like, this virtual dice... That's being rolled for everyone. <laughs> and you've got these Gundams walking around. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I got the scale backwards. It's not virtual Gundams. It's real Gundams playing Monopoly in real life. <laughs> I misunderstood. Uh, and there was also something about uh, why is paper-based currency better than the, uh, the stuff in Settlers of Guitar. Because no one fucking... Re- I, I cannot... I, just, I know people are going to be out there and they're going to like Settlers of Guitar, right? But with my dyslexia, I cannot remember all the combinations of everything and what everyone has. Just give me fucking money. That's a number I can fucking understand. <sighs> money should be used for goods and services. You can buy many peanuts. I want peanuts now. I like peanuts and crunchy bacon. Quack waka. <laughs> So, Guts and Griffith are post-eclipse. What isekai would make the best game for them to use to decide the fate of the world? God! <laughs> Whoever wins, they get to rule. See, okay, okay. Part of me is, like, feeling re-zero, but that's that's kind of a little too fucked up. I want, I want something, like, calm and peaceful. <gasps> Shit, what's the one that's um, pharmacist in another world? It's, like, you know, I, it's where we started doing Campi Cast. I can't remember. Parallel World Pharmacy. Yeah, it's so bad, right? That world. Oh, my God. How would you make a game out of that? <laughs> I thought that, wait, no, they, they you know, it's, it's like... Is it whoever has makes the most money in their in their pharmacy wins? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I didn't misunderstand the question. I'm just agreeing because of sake of our argument. No, not at all. No, that that was my intent the entire time. Whoever <laughs> earns the most money in their pharmacy, and we all know that guts would just apply amputations to everything. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> no, guts would uh, advertise strengthening things. So it'd be a battle between Griffith attracting all the ladies to uh, his boutique. And- oh my god guts getting all the men who want to get swole get some sick gains and have protein oh my god what is this on a guy muscle <laughs> yes yes and oh my god <laughs> greetings weebs this is the patreon segment this is where i talk about what one dollar a month can do for the show i've invested 
a thousand pounds in a VR headset to allow all of this amazing animation. I intend to invest more still by buying some elbow trackers so my arms don't keep doing that, <laughs> uh, as well as a hip tracker so when I move my head around, my whole torso doesn't uh, move. Um, but regardless, I have to pay for editors and I'm looking to start hiring actors to come in and facilitate uh, the animation of this. This is not a small expense. If you can even donate one dollar a month, it all contributes, it all helps and everything. I think the show has amazing potential and I think honestly this one episode alone with the, the hand movements like look, 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 the power, oh I moved, I moved, I shit I didn't mean to move. <laughs> the feel the power, the power, you know it goes a long way and you know eventually um, I'll look to get a, a whole set that is dedicated to it, not just the Phoenix Wright set. Um, and I'll look to get a custom model, not just Goblin Slayer, but maybe my own interpretation of Goblin Slayer or Tekken Man. Or maybe a guy of Um So yeah, then, you know, that, that's, that's it. That's all for me to pay for, but any finances to go for editors and actors would go a massively long way. Um, Nazith, can you think of anything else to say? No, I think you covered it. Yeah, there you go. Make sure to sign up for the OnlyFans for, for Only Feast. Oh, fuck you so much. Quick and simple one for you this time. Which character would you think would be the most fun companion in a classic D&D campaign? <gasps> I know. I know. And this is, this is not, this is not because I'm omitting anything. Washu as a person to play the game with, because whatever character they come up with is gonna be the most min-max motherfucker in known existence, and effectively is just gonna be like uh, a self-playing character and just be absolutely perfect in every way. And I'll, I just sit there and watch. And obscure rules and powers that uh, work in every situation. Much like Washu herself. Yeah, I'm, no, but Ryoko's better. I, this wasn't, this isn't a competition. But if it was, Washu would win. No, Ryoko. It's not a competition. As long as it's not Rio Oki. Yeah, that went weird. <laughs> yeah. Besides, we all know that Erd from uh, Armbikami Summer is the best. Oh, Washu. shut up, you! <laughs> okay, I think you're really going to like this one. Have you ever played Guess Who? You remember Guess Who? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, in a Chobits based Guess Who game. Oh, my God. Let's say all the characters are various models of Persicoms. What unexpected feature would your character have to throw off the other players? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. To throw off the other players or to single me out? So I think throwing off the other players implies that it's like a, it's an unexpected uh, application of a common trait, I guess, right? Like, does he have glasses? He has glasses up his butt, sure. But like, that's, you know, that would throw somebody off, I think, right? <laughs> what the fuck is... Okay, 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 right, okay. Hear me out. You know Chainsaw Man, right? Not personally. Right, well, you should. But you know how Chainsaw Man has a chainsaw coming out of his face? No way. Does he? It, it is an important feature of Chainsaw Man, okay. right? Uh, especially to the context of this. For me, it would be a GeForce RTX 4080 sticking out of my face. So... Wait, did we just did we just learn that you're the main character of the spin-off series Nvidia Man? Yes, exactly. All right. Does he have good graphics? Yes. <laughs> this man can trace rays in a way that I can only describe as tactical. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, save us. Right. So you know how in Love After World Domination, you've got these two characters who are on opposing sides of a, a Tokusatsu style, you know, battle. How would they find the time? to play Handyman Saito together, which is essentially just like a dungeon crawler, you know, randomized dungeon crawler. Oh my god. So Handyman Saito is clearly this world's equivalent of Diablo 4. So in fact, like, uh, all the NPC characters are actually the hero characters, and all the player characters are just um, useless. They have, like, no magic skill whatsoever, and it's effectively, like, a glorified um... Is it Gaia Online? Was that the 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 web-based MMO that was just basically no Second Life? There you go. Sorry, Second Life. Oh my God. Yeah, 
and, and basically, yeah, so, you know, when, when they're in their downtime, when they're at home and things, they're able to, like, spend time together and, you know, they're just watching the NPCs do all the work and they're just chilling out and doing basic household chores. Yeah. So, question four for you, Zeno. Since the Jumanji movies have evolved into straight isekai stories, name your team of four anime characters that would successfully complete a game of Jumanji. Goblin Slayer. Now Fumi. Mm, mm, mm. He's not thinking, people. He's just falling asleep. Ooh, ooh, no, no, no. Shit, I can't remember the name. The 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 father character from uh, My Home Hero. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Ooh, and um, ah, oh, fuck, Rudy is Grey Rap from Sugar Tensei. Really? Okay. Well, I went with I went with the most strategic uh, characters I could think of. Plus a glass cannon. So, you know, if if there was a tabletop RPG based on the Cyberpunk 2077 anime, but instead of cybernetics, you level up your character with like different like cyberpunk anime hairstyles, what would your character's ultimate hairstyle be? Wait, wait, did you just ask me <laughs> if there was a tabletop RPG based on the Cyberpunk 2077 anime? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just, is that what you legit repeat the question yeah if there was a tabletop rpg based on the cyberpunk 2077 anime which is based on a, a, the cyberpunk 2077 game which is based on a cyberpunk 27 <laughs> oh yeah okay <laughs> right anyway, anyway what would my hairstyle be <laughs> You gotta no. Okay, so if, if if your hairstyle is is the and we're talking about the anime specifically. If your hairstyle is like the the thing that gives you cyber psychosis. <laughs> <laughs> if the, if my hair is the thing that gives me cyber the hairstyle is the thing that gives me cyber psychosis. Yeah, that's the thing that that's that's like how you express your 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 power in in this in this world, right? Okay, okay, okay. This is really easy, surprisingly. Have you ever seen those like fake Christmas trees that ha or th th I think there's like other sort of like trees that you know it's, it's it's just like one of those dumb shit gifts, like the the the, the white elephant gifts that you typically get for people uh, from like these gizmo shops and things like this. It's it's basically it's a bunch of fiber optic cable that is used to like light up in different colors and shit like this. Imagine that initially in the Sephiroth long form um what's it called, you know, just drape that unlit up and everything. So it's it's you know, it's just gray, it's just like fucking fiber optic cable just turned off, right? But then when it becomes charged, it stands on end like a giant fucking Vegeta hairstyle and it's rainbow effects. So like, you, you know I'm charging up for my attack based on my feet and my hair going doubling in size and changing oh dear. colors. Oh dear. And I can't go through doors. Oh my god. I just want to point out that after the after the, the 40, it was a 4070 or 4090, but after that, that question, like I just, I just want to point out that that Zeno is shaping himself up to be like a, a Linus Tech Tips mean build. Like <laughs> 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 RGB, can we fit into one person? <laughs> oh. All right, let's get let's get a little meta here. Uncle from another world tells the tale of a man who was isekai and then brought back. What other isekai did he bring back as a board game from that world? And is it, in fact, Skeleton Knight who had the adventure oji san never could? Oh, well, it's gonna have to be yes and. Uh, and it's based on Carcassonne. What? Have you never played Carcassonne? Carcassonne. No, I've never heard of this. I'm pretty sure it's Carcassonne. Carcassonne? Oh, no, wait, that's a place. That's an actual place. I'm pretty sure the board game is called Carcassonne. Oh, so the game is named after the place. Okay. Yes. It's like, I think you place tiles and things like this. You build the world and you play a Skeleton Knight in there and you're destroying shit up and, you know. Yeah, I actually quite like that one. Seeing this image was enough to remind, I've actually seen this game played before. Oh, the Meeples? Yeah, I think it's Meeples. He's, he's just a little guy. 
That's cool. No, I, I, I like that. That's a good answer. Skeleton Knight as Carcassonne. <laughs> yeah, but our Skeleton Knight goes around wrecking shit up. So about how far he travels in his world. Anyway. So an even quicker question for you, Zeno. If the masterful cat was to design a D&D character, which class would he be? Bard. Do you think so? No, not in the slightest. <laughs> um, I don't really know D&D characters that well. Uh, I'm going to go with Dwarven Druid. Hmm. So I'd like to be short, but also have wild shape into a really big cat. With a level dip into Bard. Yeah, for performance. Right, so my fifth question... Uh, if there was a Ghost in the Shell version of Clue, where like you play a Section Nine, you're trying to figure out cases and stuff. Why would the like why would a, why would scenarios that are based off of the Tachikoma spinoff episodes be the best ones? Well, because the great thing is the Tachikomas both can and cannot commit the crime of stealing the cookie from the cookie jar. I I like that. I like that answer. You know, it's like, you know, because they, they all synchronize and, you know, they all they all have the same experiences and everything. So, yeah. Or, no, wait, steal the natural oil from the Bato, lock, Bato locker. Yeah. I think it was the Tachkoma in the locker room stealing the natural locker. Sorry, stealing the natural locker, stealing the natural oil. Yeah. It's like, shit, you got it right. It's like, it's like you know, you can't lose. It's the opposite of Monopoly. It's over in an instant. Uh, we've clearly saved the best question for last. Komi's decided that she wants to try and run her own campaign. What isekai can she use that would let her get away with just wildly gesturing? Oh my fuck. Okay. Wow. Uh... Come on. Search your isekai knowledge. Uh, my isekai knowledge gets dumped on the regular. Is, is it a good isekai or a bad isekai? I don't know. It's your isekai. Oh god damn it. Is there only one thing coming to mind? I just don't want to say it out loud. Go on. Okay, okay. Genuinely, genuinely, I am. I've just browsed through the last three years of anime, and there's only one isekai that I can think of that flailing around uh, works for Komi running uh, a, a campaign, a tabletop RPG campaign. And that is the eminence in shadow. Yeah, buddy. I could not think of another isekai that it could possibly work. It would explain how they got to the uh, to the point of becoming atomic, though, because it's so the world's so poorly defined. I mean, it's just like you know, little, little hands go big boom. So, I think that does bring us to a close. Now we've managed to topple the Jenga tower of questions, and I'm going to donate all my old board games to daycares. I really hope they like Ouija boards. It's time to say goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. There's so much wrong with everything you just said. So much. You should have heard the first version. So, so much. Wait, the first version?